Um, my name is Judith Borsbal. I'm working for the Meiji University of Science and Technology in the field of uh, urban planning and uh, architecture. Uh, I have a background as a human geographer, uh, but I've worked uh, for universities, for consultants, for businesses. So I've done many uh, different uh, jobs in my life. Uh, it's all about uh, cities and how to make them more sustainable. Um, I will explain in, uh, it's this one. So, um, a couple of years I was invited by uh, the European Commission to be part of the European Innovation Partnership that has already been uh, discussed as a, a, a forum where you can exchange information. And we have, um, uh, we are organized there in a couple of groups, I will explain that a bit later. So, um, I'm also in the advisory board of Smarter Together. Sofia is one of the fellow cities that's looking at the demonstrations in Vienna, Munich and Lyon in the field of uh, energy efficiency in buildings, uh, smart mobility, clean mobility and integrated infrastructures. Uh, so um, I'm following, uh, I'm very interested to see how uh, Sofia is picking up uh, the, the knowledge that's coming from these uh, demonstrations. So my university is quite far up north, uh, so it's quite uh, usually quite cold during this time of the year. Uh, we are above Oslo, uh, 300 kilometers below the Arctic Circle, um, and we um, uh, or, or mantra is knowledge for a better world. So we want to have knowledge valorized, have it applied, and we work closely with a lot of cities, in particular with Trondheim who just won a smart city project, SEC1 project, and is setting up now a big lighthouse project. So, uh, why smart cities uh, and communities? Um, basically, uh, behind this in, uh, in the EU, uh, two, two main goals. One is to improve quality of life for citizens. The other one is to improve sustainability and competitiveness. Uh, and export European knowledge to other parts of the world. And this market of uh, smart city technologies and methods is really huge. There are a lot of forecasts. Um, recently there was, um, uh, there was another forecast again, and they are not all having the same figures, but usually it are uh, a couple of billions uh, what is expected to be the, the market in future. Um, but I'm not sure if that's really going to work like that so easy because in cities you also have a lot of inertia, geographical inertia, you have social inertia, and it's not so easy to change the city overnight and I will come back to that later. So uh, we all have uh, schemes like this, what is it about, smart city technologies, uh, basically the idea is that smart city technologies help you to operate your city plan your city, manage your city in a, in a more efficient way uh, by uh, connecting uh, a lot of uh, information through uh, your urban platforms, developing new services for your citizens and uh, operating your physical infrastructure, your buildings, your roads, your energy systems in uh, another way. Um, and that's also necessary, as uh, Bas Eickhout was uh, stressing, uh, we need to do something about the cities. Probably you have read in the newspaper about this recent IPCC report. It was published uh, a bit more than a month ago, and it says to us basically the cities uh, and the society have a 12 year window to combat climate change. And uh, that's a bit scary because if you look at your city, you see that our buildings or infrastructures they have a, a very long life cycle. Money has been invested in that, uh, and it's not so easy to, to uh, redo the city overnight. So, how to deal with that? Because we have a lot of legacy systems, old systems from the past, old infrastructures that we need to still to operate that are not yet smart. We have a lot of buildings, for example, from 
about a year ago, 50 years ago, that are not energy efficient at all. We are not going to demolish them and to, uh, to put new buildings in place. And uh, that is really a dilemma because a 12 year window is really nothing on the scale of urban planning and of urban transformation. But we have to seize this window. So we have to scale up and to accelerate uh, actions and make the city smart. And meanwhile, also make the smart the city a nice city to live. It should be a pleasant city, it should be a comfortable city, it should be a safe city. Uh, I like this picture very much because this was in Berlin. It's a huge shopping mall, like the one you have uh, a bit further down the road here. And they have uh, dancing classes there. So people are just dancing in the shopping mall. And that, for me, that expresses uh, the feeling that people feel at home and are happy with this place. So, um, coming back to the EIP. Um, we, the, the, what EIP basically tries to address is that the markets are fragmented. Um, there, is, there are a lot of technologies, uh, but the technologies and the methods are not sufficiently applied. And for that reason, the market uh, stays fragmented. So the, the uh, technologies that are there have limited applications. So it's not going to accelerate in, in the pace that's needed. Also, the business models are quite uh, difficult sometimes. Uh, for example, if you want to work with geothermal energy, the return on investment is really a couple of decades. So who is going to pay that? How to develop a good business model to share those investments with the ones who profit from this clean energy and energy savings that you are realizing in that way? And as uh, mentioned by the previous speaker, we also need to have much more knowledge sharing and capacity building. So where should you go if you want to make changes to your city? So that is one of the reasons why the EIP Smart Cities has been established a couple of years ago uh, in 2011 as, a, as an, um, a deliverable of the Sustainable Energy Technology Plan, the SET Plan. And um, it has been formalized in July. After that, uh, the EU Council uh, supported it. And it basically started from 2013 with the adoption of the Strategic Implementation Plan, where we made a kind of agenda what are the topics that need to be addressed in Europe. So basically, this is the framework that is, that, uh, is used for the uh, for smart city uh, technologies in Europe. So you see the columns, the, the vertical ones, uh, that's about clean mobility, low energy districts, the integration of infrastructures and of buildings with ICT. But you also need a lot of enablers, uh, like uh, the engagement of your citizens, you need specific metrics, to see where should I do my investments or what's my progress. You need open data and standards, you need viable business models and you need integrated planning. So these, uh, these uh, let's say horizontal structures and vertical structures, that's the basis of the European uh, Innovation Partnership on Smart Cities. And uh, it has been taken together in six action clusters one on uh, mobility, one on positive energy uh, buildings, uh, one on integration of infrastructure and ICT uh, interoperability issues, for example, um, uh, ICT platforms that can use to, to run the city in a better way. Uh, we have one action cluster on citizen focus that's dealing with good methods to engage citizens, but really engage them, not only inviting them to a meeting once and never come back to them again. Um, so how, how to do that in a proper way? Uh, we have one cluster uh, working on the business models, trying to, uh, to see what is the landscape, where should people go if they have plans and need finance for that, what are the, the right models for that, and in our cluster then we work on integrated planning. Policy and regulation. In the European Innovation Partnership, we have uh, uh, about uh, uh, four or five thousand partners, uh, people that participate in, in meetings, visit meetings, etc. 
and we have 370 organizations that have committed themselves to this market uptake and market acceleration from 31 countries. Uh, so what do we do in the EIP? Well, we have action cluster meetings of the action clusters that I just showed. Uh, we have matchmaking events. Uh, we had, uh, that's something that we have worked more on in the last one or two years because uh, we try to bring together the finance industry, the cities and the solution providers so they, they uh, come up with uh, good ideas but also to bundle demand because there's quite a lot of money around in the world but many smart city projects fail to secure finance because they are simply too small and then the transaction costs for the financial industry are too high so the, the project doesn't get this uh, uh, finance. Um, there's a guide, guide developed for financial services. We have a general assembly every year. In June the general assembly was in Sofia. It was a very successful event. And a lot of people are working together to set up new projects. So we use the European Innovation Partnership to find possibilities, for example, in structural funds, in urban innovative actions, in the Urban Act, uh, in the Climate Kick. So they put together their ideas and uh, scale them up. And uh, EIP Smart Cities is run currently by um, MCI and PwC. And this is a contract for uh, an operating website, organizing the events, etc., organizing the matchmaking uh, sessions. And um, so my, my plea is go there, yeah, participate. It doesn't cost money, of course you have some travel costs, but it's good to meet all the people in Europe and try to come up with, this, uh, with these ideas that you can have then uh, finance. So you see the, the general idea of the, the roadmap of the, the EIP Smart Cities is really focusing on this market exploration, on this market uh, uptake of, of best practices, of good examples, and bring it further so you really uh, are bringing about a transition and you get more than only individual pilot projects that are uh, paid by innovation funding. No, you have to, to make it bigger and to let this market grow. Uh, but it's part of a wider EU smart city landscape, so you have um, EU funding, but you also have the political leadership. So there is more close collaboration now, for example, with the Covenant of Mayors, uh, because a lot of issues that are addressed in the EIP are basically the same issues uh, as the Covenant of Mayors is on. Uh, you know, Covenant of Mayors are more than 7,000 uh, local governments that have uh, pledged to really uh, work on their energy efficiency issues. Uh, but the fact is that more than half of their plans to uh, their action plans in the energy field is never uh, implemented at all. So they also need some help. Um, and uh, of course also the ELENA facility of the European Investment Bank, uh, Jasper's facility are all uh, very interesting vehicles to bring about uh, those changes. Uh, as I said, with uh, also the structural and uh, investment funds. So why is this integrated planning important? I'm trying to focus now on our action cluster uh, because the, the transformations that we expect from cities, especially if you have to do them in a 12 years time frame, are really very complex. Uh, there are many government sectors engaged, but also uh, a lot of uh, businesses, and uh, we all have our different backgrounds, or different disciplines, and in practice it means that a lot of uh, organizations are organized in a siloed way, so you need to invent something to get people together from different departments but also externally uh, to get people together for example in public private partnerships. And why is it necessary? It's necessary because you have a huge amount of mutual interdependencies between people. If you have, uh, if you're doing, uh, let's say, um, refurbishing a district, it's also good to think about what you can improve in the field of mobility. 
if you are working on the mobility things and you want to introduce, introduce for example, an electric car sharing system, it's also good then at the same time to organize a bi-directional exchange of energy with buildings. So there are a lot of interdependencies uh, among the stakeholders and uh, these interdependencies are not only within the city but also in the wider uh, range of, of urban stakeholders. As I said, the business cases uh, can vary from quite okay to uh, not that attractive. Some business cases have a return on investment period of uh, 50 to 60 years. So it's quite difficult to get these things done then and implemented, even though the idea might be fantastic and you might save a lot of energy uh, or uh, reduce a lot of CO2 uh, emission. So um, the, the, it's, it's not easy to get this done. And uh, also, it's, uh, you need the citizens uh, on board. You cannot decide over the head of your citizens. They have to be engaged, they have to approve. Usually they have also a formal role. And if you work with people who own uh, buildings or who uh, rent them, they also have a lot of legal rights. And they, um, uh, they also can uh, make or break your project. So we know of projects that have never taken off because the tenants simply did not want to have these uh, things done to their building because they might not think it was so necessary or they, uh, the carpet might become dirty or they had to take a day off. It can be very trivial reasons for that. So you have to educate uh, your citizens and talk with them and also see if in your plan if you can organize some co-benefits. And finally, you have a lot of coordination issues in the technical field, uh, but also in time to how to, to uh, do the right things from the long-term perspective, uh, etc. So, so what you need is, is other governance models, uh, new value chains, social innovation and uh, holistic perspective. So that brought us to the idea to start with a smart city guidance package, because we saw that a lot of cities have very good plans and want to do a lot, so there's a lot of energy in society to make changes, but it's difficult to get it uh, in, in a concrete project done. So we thought it might be good to, uh, to talk to a lot of cities, uh, to, make an, uh, to take stock of the best practices, but also of the failures, what are the barriers or the obstacles, or why did this project not take off, and we tried to condense that a bit and take, make it a bit more general and provide this information in the Smart City Guidance package. So it's, it's about how to do this integrated planning, multi-sectorial, multi-level in the government, but also with uh, a multitude of stakeholders. Coming back to the stakeholders, when we started sketching this landscape, we found that there are quite a lot them. Uh, we focus on the city administration and the staff that supports the city administration, but the city administration usually is lacking the funds uh, to, to, do this, uh, to do this implementation, finance it fully. So they have key alleys, strategic alleys, um, that, that enable them to do this. For example, the transport network operator, the energy network operator or the energy uh, provider, they are all strategic alleys. But also the owners of buildings and infrastructures and uh, real estate developers. Then you have a round, a ring around that of people who provide pieces of the puzzle, um, but are not the key to, to the successfulness of the project. But they bring in some knowledge or they enable things in the in a specific way. So the focus of the Smart City Guidance Package is on the inner part, city administration and staff, but also on the, the second ring around that the strategic alleys and maybe also co-initiators of Smart City projects. So we made a beta version um, uh, a year ago and um, we, as said, we have tried to, uh, to make it quite simple. Uh, to say, okay, this is uh, uh, this is the ideal path to do this integrated planning uh, for your city, 
And uh, the idea is to make it in the end a living document, a web-based document, and um, the paper version will be published early 2019. So we have worked on this with uh, a lot of people. Here you see the smart city landscape uh, in Europe. Uh, it are all the lighthouse projects in Europe and also the, the fellow cities that are uh, observing the demonstrations and looking at, uh, at good examples and trying to bring that to their own, uh, in their own practices. You see Sofia also on this map. And we, uh, we did a lot of interviews with the project managers of the Smart City uh, projects. And um, now at the moment we are in the, in the testing phase where we are uh, trying to see if it's really uh, helpful for cities. So the, the structure of the guidance package is more or less loosely based on the policy cycle and on uh, the methodology that's used in the a European Energy Award, um, uh, European Energy Award uh, Association of 1500 local governments. So you start with a vision, then you decide, decide to do it and commit resources to work out a plan. Then you have a planning phase, it's quite extensive, an implementation phase. You check, do I reach my goals, do I have to make some amendments? And in the end, if project is successful, you try to scale it up within your own city uh, or to replicate it in other situations or in other uh, places. So we, are, uh, we have five test beds at the moment. Um, we have uh, a couple of expressions of interest still there, but as we all do this on a voluntary basis on top of our normal jobs, uh, we don't have the capacity now uh, to take them on board. Uh, so it's uh, Santa Cruz. Uh, we had a test bed there on Friday. It's a very interesting experience. Uh, very nice to see a lot of people working hard. Uh, this afternoon we are going to do the test bed in Sofia. So we are going through all these stages that I just uh, described uh, in a kind of fixed structure and trying to develop, uh, let's say, uh, a preliminary uh, integrated plan for the city of Sofia. Uh, then we will have a test bed in Vaza on 4 December and in the first half of January uh, a test bed in Parma and one in Bruno in Czech Republic. After that we will publish the, um, uh, the paper version in March and then try to find some funding somewhere for getting it uh, in a web-based document. So, and here you see some pictures of the event last Friday in Santa Cruz, where we had 32 partners from business and from the city working on the, on the plan. And this afternoon, we are also doing this with very practical work. You see, uh, wait, so you see we have four tables. We will have four different groups, one focusing on mobility, one on energy, one on city as an ICT platform and one group of focus on environment and uh, spatial planning. Uh, so in this group we will have a reporter and a writer. So you can think already if you want to be a volunteer for that. And we are trying to fill in each uh, stage in the roadmap. We have printed out the roadmap in, in giant format. And uh, as a group we will start to fill in all these steps and propose actions and ideas and um, then in the end uh, there is also room of course to come up with your own ideas that's why we have the flip charts and the maps where you can make them uh, geo-referenced and spatial. So I hope you all participate in this and also uh, be active and come up with your ideas and see what you think is necessary uh, to improve in, in these uh, topics uh, for the city of Sofia. Thank you so much.